Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 539, Why Does Dr. Maupin Think Making Muscle is Key to Anti-Aging? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about the importance of your muscles, of exercise and muscles and testosterone and muscles. Muscle is the most important tissue in your body to assist you in anti-aging. It doesn't sound like that should be right, but it's true. Muscles burn about 80% of the calories that you expend every day. So if you don't have much muscle, you're not going to burn very many calories. And that lowers your metabolic rate. So when I have patients come to my office for a new patient or follow-up patient, or even if they're coming in just for pellets, I have them get on the in-body machine, which is a body composition machine. And it does weigh you, but then it tells you how much muscle, how much fat you have, how much water you're retaining or not retaining, if you're dehydrated, if, if you are swollen. And then it tells you basically, do you have belly fat? Is the belly fat inside your belly? Or is it between the skin and the fat, which is less dangerous than the inside of the belly fat? So we look over all of that and decide how much fat should be lost and how much muscle should be gained for a patient to have a healthy anti-aging treatment uh, with me. We also do this procedure again when patients come back four months after four to six months after their pellet insertion so that we can then compare the amount of muscle that they acquired during the last four to six months after they got testosterone. Because as you know, testosterone builds muscle. With or without exercise, it builds muscle. The benefit of uh, exercise, not just testosterone, but exercise to anti-aging has been well documented. There's many papers about it. Uh, Basically, that's the hardest thing I have to teach people. If you already exercise every day, you have a great exercise program, then God bless you and you're halfway there. But if you don't, my job is to motivate you to exercise daily, if at all possible, and at the very least every other day. Exercise literally will help build muscle until the point when you don't have any testosterone. And then exercise won't build more muscle. It will just It will just use the muscle you have and replace it, but your muscles won't get bigger, stronger, or have more stamina. So exercise is important. A lot of people who lose their testosterone and have exercised their whole life come in and say this, I exercise just like I always have, and my muscles are shrinking, or I'm not as strong, or I can't run as far as I used to run if they're a runner. So those are key sentences to me to give me a symptom of testosterone loss, even though they're doing all the work. If somebody comes in and is is sedentary, they have a job where they sit, they don't move around much, they don't like to exercise, then I try to find an exercise for them that they like. And I use a personality test, basically, the the Myers-Briggs test, to figure out what in their personality would help them or what would be their favorite exercise, what could they do on a long-term basis. And different personalities have different exercises that are good for them. So that, for me, is is one of my tools to figure out how I can um, motivate someone to exercise. And everybody's different. I mean, two people in the same family will have different personalities, and they'll have different favorite exercises. So you can't necessarily exercise with your family. You may have to exercise with a friend who has the same goals. So one of the reasons I concentrate on growing muscle mass for my anti-aging patients is that it provides many things for you um, that actually make you healthier and back up your health age. 
Now, there's a, a linear age. How many years we from when we were born is our linear age. But our health age is our body. How how old is our body really? And you can. There are many methods online that you can use to take take questionnaires. How much do you weigh? How big is your waist? How much do you exercise? What do you eat? Those kind of things. And they'll give you a health age. Or you can have your telomeres checked. Telomeres are the little ends of your chromosomes. And if they're really long, your health age is young. If they're really short, your health age is old. So you can have that tested as well. Although um, I don't ask for that test in my office. It's very expensive. But some people like to have that test. They can uh, order it online. So um, healthy tissue, what does healthy muscle tissue do for you? Because most people don't know that. Know that. Uh, it decreases inflammation, and inflammation is really a, um, an, I guess, a hot, red, swollen area in your body, but it can also be that you have inflammation just because you have too much belly fat. So inflammation actually causes cholesterol to stick to your blood vessels, causes you to age, causes damage to your joints. So in many ways, it ages you. And, to, and uh, muscle mass will, and exercise with that muscle mass will decrease your inflammation. You can slow aging uh, by taking testosterone or exercising and, and uh, make your telomeres longer. You can also uh, decrease insulin resistance, which is the first step in your path to diabetes. So we can decrease your risk of getting type 2 diabetes by actually making muscle and exercising. Exercise actually increases your bone mass. Any exercise increases your bone mass, not just weight-bearing exercise, but any, anything that you use your, your, your limbs for or your body for actually pulls on the ends of your muscles, and that pull or that tension builds bone. So that is very important as well. Um, exercise increases your metabolic rate and increases weight loss, so it increases your ability to um, lose weight and to actually feel more energy, burn more calories, not make fat. And um, the last thing that's very important is exercise helps your neurotransmitters. You make more neurotransmitters, you can think better and you feel better. Your depression decreases, your anxiety decreases. There are some genetic um, people, like people with O blood type, that literally have to exercise every day for them to feel uh, mood-wise normal. But you also help your brain to think. So if you're somebody who does a job of thinking all day or working at a computer where you're not moving around, it's very important that you get up, you exercise before you go to work, and then, then you will be able to think better and have a a better work experience, you'll also be happier. So those are the things that exercise and muscle mass do for you. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about also is um, what does lack of muscle mass come from? So uh, lack of muscle mass is called sarcopenia, and it is also called um, frailty. If you look at somebody who is um, old, you know they're old because they're hunched over, they don't move very well, and uh, they are, they, they may have fat, but their muscles are gone. Basically, you can't really see their muscles. And they don't, and you can tell they don't have a lot of muscle because they don't move very well. So what causes low muscle mass? Well, uh, one of the things that causes low muscle mass is lack of testosterone. As you hit 45, your testosterone starts dropping. You're peaking between 19 and 40, 45. Everybody's a little different. But as you, as you age past 45, you make less and less testosterone. And as for women, we actually uh, stop making our testosterone from our ovaries when we hit menopause. There's no testosterone produced. We only have androgens from our adrenal glands, which don't do the same thing. So lack of testosterone, lack of exercise, and some people come in to me and say, well, I don't like to exercise, so I just want testosterone to build my muscle. Well, they'll get more muscle, but they won't get a healthy amount of muscle, and they won't be as healthy as if they exercised. So if you just exercise and don't replace testosterone with pellets, which is how I do it, I can't speak for all the other types of testosterone, 
But if you exercise but don't have pellet testosterone, then very often you'll make muscle and then it'll get less and less muscle with each year that goes by. So I have a lot of people that are runners and all of a sudden, you know, they can't run as far, their stamina is down and their muscle mass seems to be shrinking. Well, they exercise, but they need the testosterone to help build their muscle. So that's why they call it anabolic. Anabolic's not really a bad word. It just means it builds back your tissue. So anabolic um, activity in your body requires exercise and testosterone for muscle. Uh, aging obviously causes a uh, lack of, um, of muscle mass. Uh, Overexercise. Now, this is something that's kind of counterintuitive. Overexercise, where you exercise the same part of your body every day. So runners are, are, have this. They usually run six days and rest one day. Well, they're, they're running. They are actually using their lower limbs every single day. So they aren't resting in between. And that can cause you to actually lose muscle. So you'll, if you look at runners' legs, they're not necessarily very muscly. They're usually long and lean. And that's more an effect of always running every day, using the same muscles every day. And I'll explain why that works in a few minutes. Um, inflammation itself breaks your muscles down. It breaks all tissues down. So anabolic, like testosterone, steroids, build your muscles up and all your other tissues up. And then... Uh, inflammation decreases uh, all of all of your tissues in your body. So it's not good for your brain, your muscles, your heart, anything. Um, low thyroid can cause you to have loss of muscle mass and strength. So it's very important that we have, um, have our thyroids replaced to an optimal level so that we can actually... Um, improve our heat production, improve the energy that is burned in our uh, muscles because muscles don't work very well without thyroid. And last but not least is growth hormone. Growth hormone comes from your pituitary, actually pituitary and stimulated by your uh, thymus. So it is, it is actually, excuse me, hypothalamus, excuse me, hypothalamus, pituitary, and then it makes growth hormone that goes to all your cells of your body. Growth hormone helps you grow. It helps cell turnover. It helps healing. It helps uh, leanness. It helps you make muscle, lose fat. So growth hormone is necessary. And most of us, when we take testosterone in pellet form, will increase our growth hormone. And the growth hormone will then do, all, do the work of building muscle along with the testosterone and building up all our other tissues, including bone and brain. So it's a, it's a very important hormone. Much earlier excuse me, much later than testosterone goes away, growth hormone goes away. So oftentimes we'll have a, a loss of growth hormone at 70 or in people with head injuries much earlier. So even though we give them testosterone pellets, we can have an initial surge of growth hormone, but later have it decrease. And so then we have to work on stimulating the other factors that stimulate growth hormone production. We don't replace growth hormone because there's too many risks. So we stimulate your own growth hormone production. So those are the things that um, not having exercise, not having muscle mass uh, can do. And um, what the muscle mass and um, what are caused by uh, low muscle mass. So how do you make your muscle mass grow? Well, you have a good exercise program and you have testosterone replacement with pellets. So one of the exercise issues is people who exercise every day, the same muscles, often will lose muscles. So say you go to a trainer and he or she puts you on an upper body workout and then every day you work out with your upper body and then the next week every day you work out with your, your lower body. This usually doesn't happen unless you're not using a trainer, but they know better. But what happens is you'll be losing muscle. So because muscle will, will break down when you use it. The first day you exercise, if you're exercising your upper body, you're breaking muscle down and then it goes into your bloodstream. All the components are washed out of your body. And from your food, the following day, you make more muscle and make even more muscle than you had before as long as you have testosterone. So the first day you break it down, all the components go away. Your food provides the, the building blocks for muscle. 
And the following day, you build muscle up, and that's how your muscles get stronger. So the following day, you need to rest those muscles. You need to work on a different part of your body. So my, my um, plan and most trainers' plans are work upper body one day, work lower body the next, or work your whole body and rest the following day. So you can work every other day and build muscle. You have to have protein, and usually animal protein is the best for building muscle. So except for a very small fraction of the population, animal protein is necessary to build muscle. So that's necessary. You need a lot of protein, so the volume has to be good. You also need all the coenzymes and enzymes, like B vitamins. Come, these come in uh, grains and um, and fruits and vegetables. So you need a varied diet that is heavy on protein. Uh, fat is not necessarily bad for you. It helps. It has the cofactors that re that are required to build muscle and bone. So. Um, so overall, the way to build muscle is testosterone, exercise, exercising parts of your body every other day so that you can build your, your uh, muscles. So, and, la and the, best, <laughs> the best advice is do things that decrease your inflammation. If you have a lot of inflammation, you may want to take a baby aspirin every day. You may have to take something more like Motrin, but then watch out for your stomach lining because any of the uh, NSAIDs, N-S-A-I-D, which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, those are, those are dangerous to your stomach. They can give you an ulcer. So sometimes you have to use other things like Celebrex, which is, is a prescription. You would have to get that from your doctor. There are some other prescriptions that decrease inflammation, therefore will help you build muscle. Um, when we... When we do the in-bodies on our patients, generally in patients who have um, adequate muscle mass when they start with testosterone, build muscle mass, and we see an increase in muscle mass and a decrease in, in um, uh, fat. That's what happens to most people. However, if you come to my office and you're overweight, which is often, often the case, and you don't exercise, or you, even if you do exercise, and we then give you testosterone, you will make muscle, but on the in-body machine at four months or six months, it may show your muscle shrinking and your fat decreasing. That's because when we gain weight, we gain weight under our skin, we gain weight in our belly, we also put fat in our muscle. So we make our fat, instead of looking like perfect, beautiful fat of uh, a, um, filet mignon, we make our fat look like a ribeye, which has all this fat in between the, the muscle um, fibers. So the first thing that goes, luckily, is that we lose the fat that's in our muscle along with the fat elsewhere. And that's important because then your muscle is much more effective. It's, it's more compact. It, you can see that you can see the, um, muscle or the space in between your muscles, you look what they call cut. So that is very important to lose that fat that's within the muscle. And actually, the next time my patients then just lose fat and gain muscle. So it's, it's a process. The more exercise you do, the better, the better you eat and the more fat you lose, the better. And the testosterone makes all this possible. It doesn't really work if you do all these things, but you don't give you don't replace your testosterone, you'll find that you still lose muscle and you still have fat in your muscle no matter what you do if you are not taking testosterone to build it back. Because that second day, you just won't build muscle after you've exercised. So that's very important to remember when you're exercising and planning your exercise program or planning your diet or planning your hormone replacement that all of those things are done so that you can have muscle that burns calories, that makes you healthier, that makes you stronger and also backs up your health age. These are important. I find muscle to be a good indicator of how healthy and how low a health age one of my patients is. So I do look at it often. And uh, in my office, we don't. We of course don't charge for in bodies. We require it to be done for our consultations for our weight loss program. Uh, and you can come in when you're having your pellets and just go in. It's easy to do. You just run the test yourself. And you can watch your uh, muscle mass go up 
and your weight go down. So muscle mass is important. Please don't think that exercise isn't important. It's necessary. It's one of the components to uh, having good muscle mass. And so is the fuel that you put in your body. So junk food's out. Uh, alcohol should be limited and lots of water because you require water to for this whole process. So we, we enjoy talking to you today. I enjoy talking to you today. And thank you for joining us for the BioBalance HealthCast. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.